So we're going to talk about how ham radio can be used in a real emergency situation. Now I did a video about a year ago about getting your ham license and I've had several people come back and ask me, what in the world do I need a license for? Well, in a real emergency situation, it might be nice to know what some of your options are and also to raise your level of preparedness. Now for me, I've been a ham since about 2009 and I really enjoy the hobby and talking to people around the world. And no, it's not just a bunch of fuddy-duddies talking about what they had for breakfast, although you do get some of that. All right, so you might be here if you want to learn what's one more thing I can do in the case of a real emergency. So I've seen online where a lot of people are saying, just get this little portable radio and you'll be good to go. You're golden. Well, is that true? Is it really going to do you any good? Well, the answer that I would give to that question is H to the no. It won't hardly do you any good at all. So here's the reality of this radio. Unless you're trying to communicate with somebody that's really within about two miles of your house, five on the outside, if both stations are high, you might be able to talk to them. Now, I'm talking about simplex. That's direct from radio to radio. Think about the old CBs. Those were only direct from radio to radio. We're not using a repeater because a repeater might not be working in an emergency situation, so you have to be able to rely on your own. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, the other thing that you need to know about is you don't need a ham license to buy a radio like this, or any ham radio for that matter, but you absolutely do need a license if you want to transmit and talk to anybody. Don't underestimate the importance of getting your ham license the FCC can give you some pretty hefty fines, or worse, if you're transmitting without a ham license. I'll refer you to my other video I did on that uh, about a year ago, if you want to learn more about that. Now, they do make a provision in the rules, however. If there's a threat of human life, a real emergency situation, for a licensed or unlicensed ham to be able to pick up a radio and transmit, but you better be careful with this one because there needs to be a real emergency or you can get into some problems. All right, so let's get back to the little portable radio for a second, or the HT or handheld transceiver. It doesn't matter what you call it. You might be saying, well, why can't I just unscrew the antenna and hook it to something outside to extend the range? Well, of course you can do that. All you need is an adapter to go from whatever's on your radio to your standard PL259 connection and you're in business. Now, you're still going to be limited to about 5 watts or so. It's not going to do as good as a system like this, but that 5 watts through a base station antenna can go several miles. It can really make a world of difference. A mobile antenna will perform pretty good too, even though not as good as the base. Now, there's also a thing called a repeater in pretty much every town where it'll listen on one frequency and retransmit on another. This can extend your range up to about 50 miles or so. They have 2 meter repeaters or 144 megahertz. They have 70 centimeter repeaters or 440 megahertz. What if the grid is down? Do these things have backup systems, generators, batteries, whatever? Are they going to run for a week, for two weeks? You got to think about something like this if you're geared toward emergency. Chances are some of these repeaters do have backup systems and they will run for a little while, but indefinitely? I don't think so. You need to be able to rely on your own and not use somebody else's equipment. You just never know how long things can be affected. So this is why I like to use simplex most of the time instead of a repeater. But what if you want to know what's going on past your local area, in a different state, or in a different country for that matter? Is this problem localized? Is it widespread? How widespread is it? Normally a VHF UHF radio like this one is not going to tell you that. Unless, of course, you're talking to somebody that has an HF radio that already knows. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so back to the video. Now, another option that is pretty good is the GMRS band. Now, those radios do require a license, but there's no test, so that's pretty nice. There is a $35 fee, though. Now this kind of radio can range from a little portable radio that looks a lot like this to a mobile style radio that can do up to about 50 watts. You can get pretty good range out of those. There are also many repeaters available also, but never forget as long as they're working. Now if you want to communicate with family members, as long as they're immediate family members, you can share the same license call sign and they don't even have to live in the same household. 
Now, if you have friends that don't want to fool with radios or get involved in any of that, well, you might have to work on them on that one. Now, keep in mind that you're going to be limited to about 10 miles, even if you use a mobile setup with a base antenna. So it's a good idea to have a prearranged plan in place with your friends and family. What time are we going to meet? What frequency? All that kind of stuff. You'll need to know these things ahead of time. That way you don't get caught with your pants down. Also, you want to test everything while everything is still good. Make sure your setup is going to work with whatever you go with, whatever band, whatever radio. You need to know that it'll work reliably. You might find that things will work one day and they won't work the next day. Atmospheric conditions can do that. So just because it works once doesn't mean it'll work again. Test it three or four times. That way you know it's consistent and it's going to work for you. So in most cases, the little radio with the rubber duck antenna is not going to do a whole lot for you unless you're just trying to talk to your neighbor or somebody really close. In my opinion, the minimum setup that I think somebody should have is a mobile radio that does about 50 watts with a mobile antenna. This will go about 10 miles pretty reliably on the 2 meter band or 144 megahertz. This one over here is my Yesu mobile radio. I have it connected to an antenna outside and I can get about 20 miles pretty reliably out of that. Now there are quite a few relatively inexpensive radios and antennas out there and a ton of used gear. Although it does help if you know new and used prices that way you don't wind up taking a bath on the price. All right, so we've already talked about some repeaters and that kind of stuff. Now, what stuck with me is the mindset of how can I get out there farther? More power, whatever. That's the mindset that's going to be more beneficial to you in the case of a real emergency. So you're not relying on somebody else's equipment. Pretty much everything I've talked about so far has been VHF and UHF radios, which are pretty localized radios, usually less than 50 miles. But we're going to talk about what it takes to really go the distance here coming up real shortly. All right, so let's get into some of these radios I have here in the background. This is my Yesu mobile radio I touched on earlier. It's a dual band radio, which means it can do 144 megahertz and 440 megahertz. Now this one can go up to 50 watts. You're also allowed to connect an amplifier and go up to 1500 watts legally. That also goes for HF radios. Now remember, this one is a VHF UHF radio, so it's local, generally local. I've had people come over to my house and see the antennas and they say, hey, can you go around the world on that thing? And I'm like, well, it depends on the frequency. And then I explain the difference to them. Now this other one here is my older Yesu radio. I really like this one. Sometimes I like the older radios better. I think they have their own character. This one can do up to 25 watts. It's not as powerful. All right, so now what it actually takes to talk around the country, or around the world too for that matter. Sometimes a station can be overseas and they'll sound stronger than some guy that's 10 or 20 miles down the road. It's kind of weird how that works, but it does work that way sometimes. So I've mentioned HF a couple of times already. That stands for high frequency. Despite the name, it's actually much lower in frequency than what I've been talking about so far. Now the amateur bands start at 1.8 megahertz which is just above the AM broadcast band. And these bands go up to almost 30 megahertz or 10 meters. And there are several bands in between that amateurs talk on depending on their license privileges. Okay, so this is my HF radio here made by ICOM. Now it covers all the HF bands, including one VHF band or six meters. Now after a while, you'll start to see that some of the bands work better in the morning, some work better at night, during the day. It just depends on which band you're on. After a while, you'll get used to that. Now this radio will do up to 100 watts on all bands, but this amplifier right here will boost that signal up to around 1,000 watts. But hey, you don't need an amplifier. You can talk all over the place on 100 watts if that's all you have. Now antennas for HF are generally larger. I'm using this dipole right here that runs about 135 feet from end to end. They do make condensed versions of HF antennas for small lots and stuff like that. So just because you don't have a big lot doesn't mean you can't have this. I've even heard of people having these kind of antennas in their attic. Now a dipole is just two pieces of wire running away from each other, connected in the middle with a piece of cable called a coax. There are many different designs of antennas, directional antennas, omnidirectional antennas. I'm not going to get into all that in this video. Now, if you're just interested in listening only just so you can see what's going on out there, 
You don't need any kind of a license at all to do that. You do need one to transmit, however, as I said earlier, but you can get by with a pretty flimsy antenna setup if that's all you want to do is listen. I've even heard of people connecting a coax to their gutters, and you'd be amazed what you can hook up with an antenna system. It doesn't have to be tuned to the frequency you're listening to. Now, if you do want to transmit, you do need a proper antenna that's tuned to the correct frequency or an antenna tuner like this one here that kind of helps compensate for that. Otherwise, you're going to risk damage to your radio, and you don't want to do that. Now, there are a lot of HF radios on the market, new or used. You can go to a website like QTH.com, QRZ.com, even Facebook Marketplace. There's always something for sale on there. And of course, you can get those used radios at a discounted price as long as you know what you're looking at. You can even buy an all-in-one radio that has everything. It has VHF, UHF, HF, all in one convenient box. Those are pretty cool radios too. I've, I've had some of those in the past. Now, one of the great things that I haven't mentioned yet about all these radios is, is they all run on the same power, 12 volts DC. Now that's the same juice that you get out of your car battery or marine battery, deep cycle battery. It's a good idea to have an extra battery laying around for emergency purposes. You can use it with an inverter to charge your cell phone, anything like that. It's always good to have an extra battery. Now this right here is my 12 volt power supply. You'll need one of these as long as your house power is still working to power everything. This particular one is overkill for what I need it for, but it does a great job. Typically a 30 amp power supply will work any of this stuff right here. What you need a more powerful power supply for is, is if you have a linear amplifier for VHF, those do take a lot more juice. All right, so you might be wondering, how much is this gonna cost me? Well, honestly, the sky's the limit. I remember a line from a 70s movie, Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry. The mechanic tells Peter Fonda, speed's expensive, how fast do you want to go? <laughs> you know, that line has stuck with me for almost 50 years now. It applies to ham radio too. This stuff's expensive, how far do you want to go with it? But I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to try to give you some basic prices. You know, that way you have kind of a starting point. You can typically buy a pretty good single band two meter mobile radio for under $200. A dual bander is gonna cost you 300 or more. You can even get it off brand like an Anytone radio for under $150. I've actually heard pretty good reviews on that one and I'm getting ready to get one to try it out. Now you can get a pretty decent HF radio for right around $1,000. I do believe they make a couple of mobile models still that are around $700 or so. They used to make these things a lot cheaper than this, but it seems like they've discontinued all the cheaper models in favor of the more expensive ones. I don't know why they did that. But don't forget, there's a great used market on these things, but I would be cautious about buying one of these things unless you can see it demonstrated or if it's somebody you know, something like that. Unfortunately, there's some dishonest people out there who will sell you a piece of junk. It's happened to me before. Now for a power supply, I don't think I would go crazy. You do want to stay with something that's probably right around 30 amps or so. I have this cute little MFJ switching supply here that was about $150 at the time of this video. It's uh, model number 4230. I've never had any trouble out of this one. It's been a good one. Now for a VHF mobile antenna, you can usually stay under $100 for those. Now if you get a dual band radio, you're going to want to get a dual band antenna. And if you happen to know somebody that has an SWR meter, you might want to have them check it or get your own SWR meter and check it yourself because if your antenna is way out of tune, you're going to damage your radio. Or you might damage your radio. You don't want to do that. All right, so a minute ago I mentioned a mobile HF radio. Now, of course, with a mobile HF radio, if you want to put it in the mobile, you're going to need a mobile HF antenna. I don't have any samples to show you right now, but uh, for example, you can get a four-pack of hamstick antennas. They give you four different bands, 20, 40, I think, 80. I'm not sure all the bands it comes with, but they're around $80 for the whole four pack, so that's not too bad. You'll also need a good sturdy antenna mount for those. I use this tri-magnet mount right here. It's made by MFJ, and these run about $50 or so. Believe it or not, you can talk all over the world on an HF mobile setup, although it's not as easy as, as a setup like this where you got a big long wire antenna, but it does happen and it does work. Now the SWR check also applies to the HF antennas as well. If you don't understand what checking SWR means, if you just Google how to check my antenna SWR, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so remember with VHF and UHF, they're really only reliable for short communications. Height is might on those bands. Going up a hill, getting to higher ground, that can really make a lot of difference. Just make a plan of who you intend to talk to and try to figure out what's it gonna take to make that happen. Now make sure if you buy something new, get it from a vendor that has a good return policy, right? You don't wanna buy something, find out it doesn't work, it's not gonna work for you, and then you can't send it back. You can't, you don't wanna eat that money, right? Just make sure you can send it back. All right, so I've already showed you my antennas for the most part, there's not much else out there to see. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I really don't mind. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.